Hey guys, this is Mark Joyner and I am standing in front of none other than uh, the great Tiger Muay Thai. This is sort of like the world mecca of Muay Thai now. And not only is it the mecca of Muay Thai, it is also the birthplace of what I consider to be a bona fide, genuine business miracle. Very similar to the business miracle that occurred in Las Vegas. And it happened primarily because of two particular secrets that I'm about to share with you. Before I uh, tell you those two secrets, let me tell you a little of the history of Tiger Muay Thai. And I'm gonna take a little walk here so I can sort of demonstrate uh, part of the miracle. And part of the miracle is that this all used to be jungle, what you see right here. Where Tiger Muay Thai was built was on, in a totally remote area. So this road here, uh, Soy Tayad, now affectionately known as the Soy, was th there was nothing here. It was just a, it was just a dirt road, and these guys built this gym here. And after they built the gym here, over time, what happened was is more and more shops started popping up around here, all related to fitness, Muay Thai, MMA. And then this entire road became populated with all of these different businesses. And now you've got, you know, basically any fitness related thing you want. You've got fitness camps, CrossFit gyms, they've got, uh, you know, uh, massage, uh, you know, intravenous therapies, like anything health related you want is here on this road on the soy. Now, since then, we've got all these side roads. So if you look off some of these side roads down here, some of these side roads have businesses popping up along there as well. And this just goes on and on. And it expanded so much that now the entire island of Phuket is more or less a fitness mecca. There are tons of uh, health retreats and health spas all over the island. And none of that would have existed if it had not been for the business miracle that is Tiger Muay Thai. So how did this happen? More importantly, how did it happen when there are probably gyms that might have been more deserving of being the mecca of Muay Thai? I mean, you've got gyms where guys like Bwakao and Senchai train. I mean, shouldn't those be the places that are the mecca of Muay Thai? How did Tiger Muay Thai become known as the mecca? Well, we have to understand that this is largely partly about perception, right? Largely about perception. So one of the first secrets here that made both Tiger Muay Thai and Las Vegas big, and Las Vegas, by the way, was uh, built in the middle of nowhere. It was just a, a little stop where soldiers would go as they were you know, going off to basic training. It was a little you know, bus station, and it just happened to be zoned for gambling. This guy, Meyer Lansky, figured out, by the way, here's another one of these side roads full of all sorts of fitness facilities. Uh, Meyer Lansky figured out that, uh, you know, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it into a destination. So one of the first things that Meyer Lansky did was he started getting exclusive contracts with uh, musical acts, right? So he got people to sign a contract to say, look, you have to show up here exclusively X number of times a year and not play anywhere else. And that got people flying out to Las Vegas just to see some of their favorite musical acts. So same thing happened in Tiger Muay Thai. Tiger Muay Thai started inviting a lot of famous MMA fighters, and that's another thing that made it interesting, is it was an MMA-focused Muay Thai gym. And if you know anything about the history of MMA, we kind of got to the point where we realized that the two primary tools that seemed to be most effective in all the UFC fights were Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So people, of course, wanted to up their Muay Thai game, but there weren't a lot of places to learn Muay Thai in the United States. So people, a lot of people wanted to go to Thailand, and this was an MMA-focused Muay Thai gym, and they had all these stars coming out. So a lot of people heard about the stars going out there, and they said, oh, well, if these MMA stars are going to Tiger, well, that must be the place to go. And then they would show up there just for the opportunity to perchance see one of these great fighters training at the same place. So it kind of became a destination. It became a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, so that's the first secret, and that's something you should be doing in your business all the time. Now, the second secret is actually much, much larger, and it's a little more complex than it appears on the surface. 
And to put it quite simply, it's, it's talking about following and understanding trends. The great Eugene Schwartz in his book, Breakthrough Advertising, uh, which is a book everybody should read. It's kind of a classic, great advertising book, but very hard to understand, actually. Much harder to understand than most people realize. Most people that read it, I don't think understand. One of the things that he talked about in that book is that you don't create market forces. You find them and you harness them. You find them and you harness them. Now I would quibble with that a little bit, but I would say largely it's a good way to look at things because if you can find a market force and capitalize on it, well, that just gives you an opportunity to tap into something that's already there. Now let's think about this. With gambling, this is a market force that has existed probably since the dawn of mankind. I mean, you know, there was even talk of gambling in the Bible, in ancient literature. You know, we talk about gambling. This is a human impulse that has been there for a very, very long time. And by the way, here's another side road here. We've got Titan Fitness, yet another offshoot of the great soy. So, Meyer Lansky was harnessing a market force that had been in existence for millennia. Now, the guy who founded Tiger Muay Thai, he saw the writing on the wall with this trend of MMA. He saw that MMA was getting really, really big because of the UFC. Okay, now by the way, MMA had been there for a while, but the UFC is what popularized MMA. And he saw that, he saw that opportunity and he struck while the opportunity was hot. Now this reminds me of something that the great Wayne Gretzky said. Wayne Gretzky said, hey look, I don't go to where the puck is. I skate to where the puck is going to be. And that's what you need to do in your business. You need to skate to where the puck is going to be. So you've got to be able to identify these market forces and these trends. But here's the problem. The problem today is that these market forces are very hard to predict if you don't understand the technological battlefield. The technological battlefield is everything. There are things occurring right now in the world that most people are not aware of. They're not aware of the technological forces that are changing the world so rapidly right now. Now, if you think what you've seen so far in the 2020s is radical change, you ain't seen nothing yet because we're just getting started. Now, for those of us who are futurists like me, we've been studying these phenomena for a long time. We were not surprised by the things that we've seen so far in the 2020s. We know that more radical change is on the way. So what I advise you to do as a business owner, if you wanna be able to capitalize on these market forces, on these trends that most people are simply not equipped to be able to see, my new book, which I'm giving away for free, is called Your Roadmap to Money in the 2020s. You can get that for free at yourroadmaptomoney.com. And it's gonna do several things for you. One is it's gonna explain to you the different market forces that the technological trends are creating. There are technological shifts occurring in the world right now that most people are simply not aware of. And because they're not aware of them, they're not going to be able to identify the trends. This is going to explain to you the technological landscape that most people don't understand. If it were up to me, this is what the news would be talking to you about all the time. Most of what the news is telling you about and getting you to argue about and debate about is last century's debate. It's all stuff that's gonna be very, very obsolete very soon. So it's gonna explain those market forces to you and it's also going to identify for you several different emergent markets that I've identified. Now, since I wrote the book, many of these have already started to come true. These are you know, industries that I said are gonna start popping up. Several of them have already started. And there are about 15 different industries that most people are not even aware of where I believe the easiest money is going to be. So if you wanna learn about that and start capitalizing on these market forces, start capitalizing on these trends, and even more importantly, prepare yourself because those who aren't prepared for what's coming, they're gonna be blindsided, okay? So I don't want you to just be ready. I want you to prosper through these crazy times. So click on the button or the link wherever you end up watching this or go to yourroadmaptomoney.com and you can download that book for free. It's a very quick and easy read. You'll read it in one or two sittings. There's lots of images. It's very fun. You know, I made it so that uh, it's accessible. Most people, again, say they read it in one to two sittings and it's going to change the way you view the world and I hope prepare you for 
what is coming because what is coming is going to shock a lot of people. 